Okay, to make fruit or just plain sweet scones, you need 250 grams of self-raising flour, which I've got in my bowl, and 50 grams of butter or margarine. You need to chop the butter or margarine just into smallish pieces, put it into your bowl, and then you can rub in with your fingers. So, fingers like little scoops, pick up some butter and margarine and then rub thumbs over fingertips. Just make sure that you get a bit of butter and a bit of margarine every time. And while I'm just rubbing this in, I have 125 mils of milk ready and 50 grams of caster sugar. And you can add 75 grams of any dried fruit that you like to this mixture if you want to turn your sweet scones into fruit scones. It is up to you. When you're rubbing in, this will not look like breadcrumbs, but you should see a slight change in the colour of the flour. So it's not going to go completely like breadcrumbs because there's not enough fat in the flour. And if you want to move your bowl, keep your hands inside the bowl. I'm just turning mine occasionally to make sure that I'm not rubbing in in the same place all the time, down to the bottom. And when you think that you've got your fat rubbed into your flour, shake your bowl, any large lumps will come to the top. So I think that is done. And I am just going to wash my hands. So now I've got clean hands again, I'm just going to stir in my 50 grams of sugar. And this is where you would stir in your fruit if you were using fruit. I don't want fruit in these scones today. I would just like them to be um, sweet scones. So I'm not putting any fruit into mine. And then make a well in the middle and add nearly all of the 125 mils of milk. I've still got a little bit left in my jug. And stir this up with a knife. And you use a knife, not a spoon, because it cuts through the mixture more easily and it makes it easier to get it all mixed up. You can see, even though I haven't put all of my milk in, that mixture looks as if it is going to stick together. So I'm just going to clean off the knife, put that down, put my hands into the bowl and finish this off with my hands. This mixture is a little bit soft. So I can feel it's just a little bit soft, which means I'm going to need to put a bit of flour on my worktop before I put that out of the bowl. But the bowl is basically clean. I have no mixture left in the bowl. And I'm going to just knead this lightly and then turn it over while I wash my hands again because I know that all this sticky on this hand will just stick to that dough and make it more difficult to work with. Okay, so I've got clean hands. I'm just gonna put a little bit more flour underneath, a little bit of flour on the top, and I'm just going to press this dough out. I don't want to use a rolling pin because it tends to roll too thin. People get a bit carried away with a rolling pin and think they've got to roll forever. We want this to be about one and a half centimetres thick. So I'm just going to use the side of my thumb to gauge that and that's about right. So it's not lots and lots of rolling with this. And then choose your size of cutter. When you are cutting the scones, you need to try and get as many as you can from each rolling. So don't put one here then and then say, oh, I can't get any more and scrunch it up. We need to put the cutters as close together as possible. And if your cutter starts to stick, just put it into the flour and it should make it easier to get 
the shapes out. So from this first rolling, I've done this a little bit thin, but I'm going to get six. I'm going to get six of those scones, and then I'm going to scrunch this up and roll it again, or pat it out again. Could have made those a little bit thicker. What you need to do is make sure that you are not making the second batch of scones thinner than the first batch so that they don't all cook at the same time. So I've got another one there. If I scrunch that up a bit, I can get one more. And then or possibly one more and then the blob. So I think one more scone, one more properly shaped scone, and then the little bit that I've got left, there's always a little bit left, that's going to be the blob on the baking tray. So the last thing that I'm going to do with these, when I put them onto my baking tray, onto my prepared baking tray, which could have um, baking parchment, can be greased, can be floured. They just need a little bit of milk, a bit of your spare milk on the top, just to glaze them, and then they're going into the oven for 12 to 15 minutes. Hot oven, 220 degrees, gas mark seven. Okay. The plain scones, the sweet scones are done. They've risen, they're nicely cracked around the edges, which is what you would expect. And if you tap them top and bottom, they sound hollow. So these scones are then cooked.